In this video we're going to solve two-step equations. So if you haven't already, you may want to make sure you know how to solve one-step equations. I have a couple videos on that. You, you should make sure you know how to do that before this video. Let's review a little bit about what we learned in solving one-step equations. The goal with any equation is to get the variable by itself on one side of the equal sign. That is the goal. How do we do that? How do we accomplish that? Well, we start doing stuff to both sides of the equal sign using this golden rule. Whatever I decide to do on one side of the equal sign, I have to do on the other side of the equal sign. What kind of stuff might I want to do on the different sides, the two sides of the equal sign? The addition property of equality tells us we can add something to both sides of the equal sign. Now that something may be a negative number as well, so basically that ends up being like subtracting. Really you could think of this as the addition or subtraction property of equality because C could be a positive or a negative number. What else might we want to do? Well, we might want to multiply on both sides of an equal sign which the multiplication property of equality tells us we can do with this C number here. If A equals B, this is your equation. A isn't really representing a number. It's sort of representing the whole side of the equation. A is the left-hand side of the equation, and B is the right-hand side of the equation. Then I can multiply that side by whatever number I want, as long as I do it on both sides. And why would I want to do that? Because I'm trying to get X by itself. So I'm picking numbers to multiply, divide, add, or subtract on both sides of the equal sign in order to accomplish my goal, which is to get x by itself on one side of the equal sign. So let's look at an equation that's going to take two steps to solve. 3x plus 4 equals 12. Okay, what's my goal? get the variable by itself on one side of the equal sign. Well, I better find my variable if my whole goal is based around my variable. Where is it? There it is. It's on the left-hand side right there, that x. My goal is to make it so there's only an x on the left-hand side of the equal sign. So eventually when I'm done, it's going to look like x equals something over here. Okay? This 3 and this 4 is going to be gone. So I have to do stuff to both sides to make that happen. I'm going to get rid of this for now. How do I do that? i got to do what I do on one side of the equation, I have to do on the other. So I, I need to decide what number I want to get rid of here first. So I need to get rid of the 4, and I need to get rid of the 3. That's why it's called a two-step equation, because I've got two numbers I need to get rid of to get x by itself. The order that you want to do it is backwards of the order of operations. You want to if you you want to use the addition property of equality first. If you if you're going to use that, you want to do that first. Okay, this guy right here, and then the multiplication property of equality. So let's look at this. I got to get rid of the four. It's a plus four. So in order to get rid of the plus four, I'm going to have to use the addition property of equality and add a negative four. Then I need to get rid of the 3. Since it's 3 times x, since the 3 is multiplied by the variable, I'm going to have to use the multiplication property to get rid of that, either multiply or divide. Again, like I said, the order that you do these makes a difference. So since we have to use both of these, we want to do the addition property first. So let's do that. Here we go. We're going to get rid of this plus 4 by adding a negative 4 to both sides. Add negative 4 to both sides. Now we're going to combine like terms and see what we've got. On the left hand side we've got a positive 4 and a negative 4 and those are going to cancel each other out which is what I wanted to happen. That's the whole reason I added a negative 4. So what do I have left over here? I just have 3x. Bring down your equal sign. Always make sure you do that. It's like your balance. You got to keep that there. And then on the right hand side, I have 12 plus negative 4, which is 8. Same as 12 minus 4, right? Okay. So now, is x by itself? That's my goal. Not quite. I got to get rid of this 3. How do I get rid of this 3? It's 3 times x, so I have to use the multiplication property of equality, which remember, I could either multiply or divide. So to get rid of this 3, I could multiply by something or divide by something. Let's go ahead and do divide. It's a little bit faster. Well, not really, but it's a little bit 
It looks a little less complicated, we'll just say that. So let's say I divide both sides by 3. Why do I want to divide by 3? Because these 3's will cancel. 3 divided by 3 is 1, which is what I want. I want x by itself. So whatever number is being multiplied by x, you divide by that number. And I end up with x equals 8 divided by 3, which is an improper fraction. Don't freak out. It's okay. 3 goes into 8 two times for 6, so I have 2 left over, and then my denominator of 3. So my answer is 2 and 2 thirds. Basically, it's just using the same techniques you did in one-step equations, except you have to do two steps in the same equation. Let me show you this same equation uh, a little a little bit differently, just showing the work a little differently and see if you like it. You might decide you like this way better. Okay, here's the same equation, 3x minus 4 equals 12. A lot of times when I teach it, I'll talk about uh, subtracting 4 and we'll write it underneath like this, instead of on the sides. And depending on what textbook you have, they're going to show it one of these two ways. So if I write it underneath, then I can bring my 3x down the positive 4 and the negative 4 go away. They make 0. I don't have to write 0 because it's plus 0, which is just 3x. Bring down your equal sign, and 12 take away 4 is 8. And then you could do the divide by 3 thing, or the alternative to that would be multiplying by what? What could you multiply by to make this 3 go away? 1 third. Did you get that? Maybe, hopefully. All right, so in that case, the 3s would cancel. And on the left-hand side, I would have x. And on the right-hand side, I would have 8 over 1 times 1 over 3, which is just 8 over 3. Same thing as up here, 2 and 2 thirds. So there's a little bit different way to do it if you like that way. You know, you decide. It, it's, it gets you the same answer. So, you know, whatever works for you. That looks a little bit crowded in there. Let's make sure there's no confusion. That that one that was there was under the 8 to make it into a fraction and then my answer was 2 and 2 thirds. It kind of looked like 21 there for a second. Alright, let's try another one. Let's see. Let's try one that comes out pretty nice then we can check it. And I think if you feel comfortable you should probably pause the video and try it yourself. Negative 10 equals 2 x minus, oh, let's go with 16. Now again, you're trying to think of something. Well, the whole goal of this is, is to come up with something, that some number that you'd multiply by 2, and then subtract 16, and you'd end up at negative 10. And that's a little bit tough to do in your head. It's tough to come up with, you could guess, you know, is it 1, is 2 times 1 take away 16, negative 10? No, you know, you could just guess and try to come up with it. Um, but these techniques will make it so you know you're coming up with the right answer. And this one's going to come out nice, but the last one, it was a fraction, 2 and 2 thirds. No matter how long you sit there and guess, it's probably it's going to be a while before you come up with 2 and 2 thirds. So use the techniques and, and find the value of x. Go ahead and pause the video and give this one a try. All right, let's see how you did here. So our goal is to get x by itself, which this time the x is on the right-hand side. So what's over there with that x on the right-hand side? Well, I got a 2 that's multiplied by the x, and then I got a 16 that's subtracted. So I need to do the addition property of equality first. Since this is a minus 16, I'm going to have to add 16 to make that go away. So since I'm adding 16 on the right-hand side, I have to use my golden rule and add 16 on the left-hand side. Let's see what we get. Negative 10 plus 16 would be 6. Bring down my equal sign. Bring down my 2x. And these guys right here, they cancel each other out. Plus 0. I don't have to write that. I'm almost there. I think I know the answer now. 2 times what is 6? I'm pretty sure it's 3. I think so. Let's go ahead and finish with our techniques. The, we're going to use the multiplication property of equality because this is 2 times x. So I have to use the multiplication property of equality to get rid of that 2. I could either divide by 2 or multiply by 1 half. Whatever makes you happy. 
Most people divide by 2 because they don't like the, using fractions. But So if I'm going to divide by 2, why am I going to do that? So these cancel because I want this 2 to go away. My golden rule says I have to do it on this side as well. So we end up with 6 divided by 2 is 3 equals, and those cancel. So I just end up with x equals 3, or 3 equals x, same thing. Let's check it. Remember how to check it? You take your original equation, negative 10 equals 2x minus 16, and you plug your answer in for x. So I'm going to take this 3, and I'm going to plug it right there in for x. So now my equation will say negative 10 equals 2 times 3 minus 16. And then we'll just simplify and, and see if it's right. Let's see. 2 times 3 is 6. Take away 16. 6 take away 16 is negative 10. So I end up with negative 10 equals negative 10. It did equal. The left-hand side did equal the right-hand side when I made x equal 3. So that is the solution. Should we try one more? Practice makes perfect. Let's put, let's try one more. You know, there's one kind of problem we haven't done yet that we should do. I should have kept that smiley face there. Let's see if you can um, come up with how to do this one. How about x over 3 minus 6 equals 1? If you want to take a shot at that, pause the video, give it a try, start it up when you're ready. Alright, this one looks a little different because I have x over 3, and we haven't done one of those yet, but if we just follow these rules over here, we should be able to make it work. We still have the same goal, which is to get x by itself on one side of the equal sign. The x is on the left-hand side this time, so our goal is to get x by itself on the left. So we need to get rid of this 3. And we need to get rid of this minus 6. In order, do I have to use the addition property of equality? Well, to get rid of this 6, since it's a minus 6, I'm going to have to use the addition property. Remember, addition and subtraction, kind of the same thing. So if it's minus 6, I'm going to have to add 6 to make that go away. This 3 is divided by 3, so I'm going to have to use the multiplication property of equality and either multiply or divide to get rid of that. have to use the addition property of equality first, so let's get rid of this minus 6. I'm going to get rid of that by adding 6. I don't know if you noticed, but the last couple examples I've been writing the plus 6 under here like that, and that's fine. You can do it that way. I'm going to switch it up a little bit here just to show both ways, and I'm going to write it on the same line like this. I can add 6 to this side and then add 6 to the other side. Combining like terms, I see that this 6 and this minus 6 are going to go away. They're going to be 0, and 0 plus anything is just that thing. So that leaves us with x over 3 on the left-hand side. Bring down my equal sign. On the right-hand side, I have 1 plus 6, which is 7. So I'm closer now to having x by itself, which is my goal. The only thing I need to get rid of now is this 3. Okay, so this is a new thing. Now I've got x divided by 3. In order to get rid of that, I'm going to have to use the multiplication property of equality. What could I multiply by that would allow me to cancel this 3? Don't think too hard. It's not too difficult, really. It's just a... 3. Because if I multiply by 3, I'll be able to cancel it with this 3. That's what I want to do. I want to get rid of this 3. So I'm going to choose to multiply by 3. I can multiply by whatever I want to, as long as I do it on both sides. So I get to pick the number that accomplishes my goal, which is to get x by itself. So I pick 3 because it cancels this 3, which is accomplishes my goal of getting x by itself on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, I have 7 times 3, which is 21. x equals 21. That's my answer. Let's check it out. Check. x over 3 minus 6 equals 1. I got 21 for my x value, so I'll erase that x, and I'll replace it with my answer of 21, 
and cross my fingers, although I'm pretty confident I don't need to have to cross my fingers. 21 divided by 3 is 7. Take away 6 equals 1. Yes, it does. I have the correct answer. I'm so proud of myself. So, we have the solution. We know the value of x that makes the equation true by using the addition property of equality and the multiplication property of equality. And as long as you do anything in algebra, you will be using these properties. So practice, 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 so you are comfortable with them.